Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a smashing problem for you all today. This problem was shown to me by a viewer of my channel, Ram Swarup Mohanty, and he got it from a YouTube channel that's in Hindi. Uh, so I'm going to put a link to that channel in the description of my video. I don't know how to speak Hindi or understand Hindi, but I was able to figure out the solution just by looking at the diagrams and the equations in that video. Uh, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm going to go over my solution. Uh, so we have a triangle ABC, and X and Y are two points on BC, such that BC is equal to 2XY. So there's a choice of what X and Y are. AA prime is a diameter of the circumcircle of triangle AXY, which we'll call omega. And we let the perpendicular through B to BC meet the line AX at point P. And we let the perpendicular through C to BC meet the line AY at Q. And we want to show that the tangent to omega, which is the smaller circle at A prime, passes through the circumcenter of triangle APQ, which I've labeled S. So it looks like this circle might pass through C, but it actually doesn't. That's just a coincidence. Um, all right, so the first thing I notice is that since AA prime is a diameter of omega, uh, showing that the tangent at A prime passes through S, that's the same as showing that angle S, A prime A is 90 degrees. And that's the same as saying that if we extend AA prime to meet the bigger circle at a point E, then it's the same as saying that A prime is the midpoint of AE. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. I'm actually going to work backwards. I'm going, going to uh, reflect A over A prime to be a point E. And then I'm going to try to show that that point is cyclic with A, P, and Q. So I'm going to hide the circumcircle of A, P, Q for now. And I'm going to hide point S. And I'm going to reflect A across A prime. So it's at point E. Okay. I want to show that A, P, E, Q is cyclic. I would solve the problem. All right. And I'm also going to do one other thing, which I'll explain sort of my motivation for it later. So we want to use the fact that BC is equal to 2XY. But basically, that means that uh, if we reflect B over point X and we reflect C over point Y, then that means their reflections would be the same point. So I'm going to call that point F. Um, so basically, this fact in the problem that BC equals 2XY, it means that the, we can find a point F such that BX is equal to XF and CY is equal to YF. So I'm going to write this out. Okay, so here's everything I just stated. Um, all right. So now I'm going to show something uh, kind of interesting. I'm actually going to show that uh, triangle EA prime Y is similar to triangle PXF, and also that EA prime X is similar to QYF. Uh, so the motivation for this isn't totally obvious, but I kind of figured it out. So originally I solved a degenerate version of the initial problem. So I solved the version of the original problem where X is equal to B and Y is the midpoint of BC. And then by solving that version of the problem, that sort of led me to this idea. All right, so I'm going to draw in a couple of those segments that I just mentioned. Um, before I do that, I'm going to notice a couple things. So it's not hard to see that triangle A, A prime Y is similar uh, to triangle P, X, B. Because um, angle A, A prime Y is equal to angle A, X, Y, which is equal to angle B, X, P. So... Uh, I'm going to write this out. So, um, first of all, since A, A prime is a diameter, we have angle A, X, A prime is equal to angle A, Y, A prime, which is 90 degrees. And then we can go forward with what I just mentioned, just drawing in a couple more segments. Um, so, angle B, X, P is equal to angle A, X, Y, which is equal to angle A, A prime, Y. So, that means that those two triangles have to be similar, B, X, P, and A, A prime, Y. And similarly, triangle CYQ has to be similar to angle X, A prime A. All right. 
So that's going to come in handy later when we um, use some ratios. All right, so how do we end up showing what I just mentioned? Um, so I'm going to draw in those two more segments. I'm going to show that angle EA prime Y is similar. I'm sorry, triangle EA prime Y is similar to triangle PXF. Uh, I'm going to do it using side angle side similarity. So it's not hard to show that angle EA prime Y is equal to angle PXF. And then I'm also going to show that the ratio of the sides surrounding those angles are the same. Okay. So here I'm going to first show that the ratio is the same. So EA prime over A prime Y, that's equal to AA prime over A prime Y. Um, because uh, by definition, E is the reflection of A across A prime. And then AA prime over A prime Y is equal to XP over BX. That's because we just showed that those two triangles are similar, uh, BXP and YA prime A. And those are corresponding parts of those two similar triangles. And then XP over BX is the same as XF over um, or XP over XF. Um, that's because BX is equal to XF by the way we constructed point F. All right, so we've shown that in uh, these two triangles, EA prime Y and PXF, uh, if you take the ratio of the sides surrounding that obtuse angle, uh, they're the same. And now I'm gonna show that those two obtuse angles are the same. Uh, it's a fairly easy angle chase, so here it is. So angle E A prime Y, it's 180 minus angle A A prime Y, and that's the same as 180 minus angle A X Y, which is angle P X F. So when we combine these two facts, that's enough to show the similarity. So we have uh, triangle E A prime Y is similar to triangle P X F. All right, and we can apply the same argument to show that angle, I'm sorry, triangle E A prime X is similar to triangle Q Y F. So we've got a lot of information here and ultimately we want to show that A P E Q is cyclic. Uh, so where do we go from here? Well, uh, some of you may notice that since these triangles are similar, uh, let's say E A prime Y and Q uh, I'm sorry, and, and PXF, uh, that means that there's a spiral similarity that takes one to the other. And the same is true with this pair of triangles. So what we can do is, uh, I'm gonna extend uh, QF to meet EX at a point, I'll call it G. And for those of you that know spiral similarities, uh, that means that GAQE has to be cyclic. Uh, so I'm going to write out the proof here, but it's not very hard. So angle AQG, it's equal to angle YQF. And angle YQF is equal to angle A prime EX. That's due to these similar triangles that we just found. And angle A prime EX is, is equal to angle AEG. And so AQEG is cyclic. But we want to show AQEP is cyclic. Um, well, what we could do is we could show that we could try the same thing with point P. So basically, we could extend PF to meet EY at another point, and then we'd have another cyclic quadrilateral. Um, the question is, how do we know that those are the same? How do we know that those cyclic quadrilaterals have the same circumcircle? Um, so it turns out since X, F, and Y are collinear, we can use Pascal's theorem to show that that's the case. So I'm gonna do this in reverse a little bit. So I'm gonna start with the fact that A, Q, E, G is cyclic and I'm gonna draw the circumcircle around it, but we don't know yet that it passes through point P. That's what we're trying to prove. Uh, so I'm gonna hide point P temporarily and all this stuff associated with point P. I'm going to draw this circle, AQEG, and my goal is to show that P actually lies on it. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to leverage Pascal's theorem here. So you'll see uh, how I try to attempt to do this. Um, so I'm going to let EY meet the circle at a point and AX meet the circle at another point. Uh, I'm going to let AX meet the circle at P prime. And I'm going to let EY meet it at a point, which I'll call H. And then by Pascal's theorem, it turns out that H, F, and P prime uh, have to be collinear. Um, that's because if you look at um, the hexagon G, A, H, uh, Q, E, P prime, uh, if you take the intersection of these two uh, segments, it's X. Uh, the intersection of these two segments, it's Y. And then, then that means that if you intersect GQ with HP prime, uh, that intersection point has to be collinear with X and Y by Pascal's theorem. Uh, but F is collinear with X and Y. And, and F is where GQ meets uh, BC. So that means by, by the converse of Pascal's theorem, essentially, H, F, and P prime have to be collinear. All right, and once we know that, we're very close to showing that P prime was actually P um, because the fact that all these points lie in a circle, we can essentially use it to show uh, that P prime XF is similar to triangle E A prime Y, and then that would be the same as showing that P and P prime are the same point. So I'm gonna do that here. It's exactly what I've done before, but just working backwards. So uh, we have angle X P prime F is angle A P prime H, which is the same as angle A E H, which is the same as angle A prime E Y. Okay, so two of the three angles are the same in those triangles, uh, P prime X F and E A prime Y. And now I'm gonna show that the obtuse angle is also the same. That's also an easy angle chase. So angle P prime XF, it's 180 minus angle AXY, which is 180 minus angle AA prime Y, uh, which is angle EA prime Y. All right, so that means that P prime XF is similar to triangle EA prime Y, but we set up here that uh, P, triangle PXF is similar to EA prime Y. So it's very easy to see from there that P and P prime have to be the same point. So P prime is actually P, uh, which is the, uh, the, where the perpendicular from B to BC meets the circle. So we, have, we can draw on that segment there. And now we're essentially there because that means that APEQ is a cyclic quadrilateral, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And so that means that A prime is the midpoint of the chord AE. So I'm gonna write this out. So A prime is the midpoint of the chord AE of the circumcircle of APQ. And if that's true, then if S is the center of the circumcircle of APQ, then that means that angle S A prime A has to be 90 degrees. And since A A prime is a diameter, uh, that means that the tangent to the circle omega through A passes through S. So I thought this was a very cool application of Pascal's theorem, which I don't use that frequently. Uh, the solution on the channel that I mentioned had a, was a, probably a little more elementary, um, but I feel like my solution also um, had a lot of interesting things to it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.